Hey guys, Chris Grant here from Clear the Shelf again. This will be our this should be our last video uh, for the series on tactical arbitrage, and this is all about your settings page. Uh, it's found right up here in the menu uh, settings, and it, this right here is the domain that you're going to be sourcing from. Uh, I source from the USA. You can choose whether it's UK, Canada, or Australia. And I personally sell on .com, but you may sell on .canada, .ca, or .co.uk, and you want to set those to whatever you are, uh, whatever you are selling on, whatever platform you're selling on. Now, in here, we talked about putting in your MWS seller ID and your MWS authorization token. These lines are for the UK uh, version. Now. If you are a UK seller and an American seller, you can put both in there uh, and you can switch back and forth between things. Right here is where you put in your Walmart API key. This is optional, but it's very simple to do. Uh, just Google Walmart API key and you'll be able to go fill out the information and you'll get one. And once you get that, uh, you will be able to copy and paste it right over here and it will allow you to search much deeper into the Walmart catalog than you can currently. Sorry about that. If you decide to get a Keepa API key, uh, which is optional for the Amazon flips, it's not necessary. Alex does pay for Keepa API, uh, Keepa API uh, so many every month and uh, you can use those but if you'd like some of your own you can grab those and get that and put that in there your notifications when a search is finished you can uh, ask the uh, tactical arbitrage to send you email notifications I do not because uh, it's not quite fast enough for me but you can also have it send you a text message or an SMS notification you just have to type in your phone number there and if you click this box here, uh, your computer will actually make a little bell sound <clears throat> and let you know that your search is all finished. When you're searching, you can allow the searches to include global user matching edits. So if you spend time uh, finding items uh, that have been uh, that are mismatched and you go out and actually match them up this will allow other people to see them if you keep that uh, that open some people might worry that you're not going to people might go in and try to game the system well Alex does check up on those and those kind of people will get banned so if you plan on doing that don't <clears throat> but what I have found <clears throat> excuse me what I have found is that those global user matching edits are very accurate. Uh, someone's done it by hand, whether it was me or another user, and there might be some profit in there for you. So I like to keep that checked, but if you only want machine matching, you can choose that as well right here with this radio button. Local FBA calculations, uh, it's only for the U.S. right now, but it, uh, it does things a little bit more um, accurately, so I go ahead and check that and then your search type. This is how deep you want the cache to go. Uh, the cache goes all the way back to five days or all the way forward to live only. Live will take a little bit longer uh, and the further back you go into the cache uh, things can get a little, uh, little less accurate. I don't find them to be too inaccurate and once you find some matches, you can actually update the prices to, uh, to live prices. So I try to keep mine right in between around three days. This allows me to have a little bit more speed uh, and also some, uh, some more accuracy. But then I can go in and I always double check before I make a purchase, just like I would suggest you to, because things do change as we know on all marketplaces not just Amazon. The Amazon flips cache uh, if you do not have an API key then the cache of three days will be set. I do not have an API key I do not do Amazon flips enough to justify it so I go ahead and just use the three days there. You can type in your PayPal email address if you do some matches uh, and you actually win the cash prizes every month. This is where your 
uh, where your money will go to. Uh, it's not necessary for me. I don't do a whole lot. I don't do as many as I should, uh, but they are in there. And then viewing. This is how many items or data points will show up when you view your data. I chose a thousand rows because I, if I happen to do a an extremely large scan, I want to make sure that I'm not missing out on any. Now, this doesn't mean that you're limited to a thousand rows. If you happen to have 1,500 items, uh, they will all be saved, but you'll have to delete some out to get to the others. So. Um, I've never really gone over a thousand except for when I've scanned multiple multiple stores and I've kept my uh, my filters pretty uh, not strict and they're pretty wide open filters so you know do that based on what you would like and then here the show number of lines on the view data uh, I have it defaulted to 50 that way I'm not overloaded by information and I can go through and there is pagination on the bottom so you can go through the pages and you can also sort things uh, uh, you know by ROI and, and that kind of thing so uh, but you want to set these so that they are uh, comfortable for you and uh, you want to set them so that you know maybe you're not worried about speed maybe you're worried about more accuracy maybe you want more speed and you can go in and look for things yourself it is all personal preference this is just how I set things up uh, and I know that I know Alex for example goes with the longer cache just to make things faster so it is all personal preference so I hope this helps kind of walk you through I know it was quick but it walks you through all the settings if you have any questions at all Please leave me a comment in the uh, in the comments below. Leave me a, a comment over on my blog. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. I do read everything, and uh, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, guys.